in the um, you know the, the overall ecosystem that I'm going to describe, you know the the, the uh, uh, human generated annotations is part of you know kind of the you know, the overall uh, appro approach. But um, but I'll be focusing mostly on what we're doing to connect primary texts with secondary uh, literature. So the, um, the the best way to kind of describe the idea, and I'll start with the demo of an old project, then I'll talk about this new project some more, and then give a demo of the um, you know of an early state of, of this new project. Um, uh, but to kind of illustrate the concept, I will refer to a project that we did four years ago in, in JSTOR Labs. This is either the first or the second project that we did, and this was a collaboration with the Folger Shakespeare Library in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, one of our board members at the time had just come from the Library of Congress and said, hey, you know, you guys ought to be uh, talking to the, the folks over at the Folger and then see if maybe you could figure out some fun and inter interesting thing to do with them, and, and, and this was, in essence, the out, outcome of that uh, initial uh, endeavor. So the, um, the, the idea here is, is to kind of get away from the way that, that research is typically performed on, on primary text, where a user will go to a site like JSTOR or Google Scholar or you know, you know, pick your favorite um, you know, source for finding scholarly literature. And start performing a you know a series of searches you know the, the twenty questions sort of thing where you try to find the content of interest you know so this was to turn that around and you start with the primary text and then use that as a way to find the scholarship that re refers to it so in this case we we explored that idea with uh, the f uh, Folger Shakespeare plays that they had digitized um, we started with Macbeth initially as a proof of concept and the the approach worked so well that we ended up doing all of them uh, and this site is online and has been for a few years now but um, uh, the, the the basic idea is illustrated by let me pick Macbeth here so we have the 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 full play text this this is you know an unaltered version of the digitized text that the Folger supplied uh, for the plays and you'll notice these these linked numbers in the in the center here. Uh, this refers to the number of articles in JSTOR that have quoted that particular line. So we've done some text matching to identify uh, content in JSTOR that uh, quote that line. If you click on that, then you get a you know, a list of of, of those articles. Um, you can also hover over the thumbnail and it'll show you the the quoted passage in context. So kind of a, you know, kind of a, a, a cool idea. People really seem to like this. Um, it's pretty heavily used even today. A, a lot of uh, high schools use this for, um, for, for teaching and, um, and, and such. So, uh, so it, was a, it was a fun project. We did this a few years ago, put it on the back burner, and, um, and have recently decided to pick this up and, and do it in such a way that we can generalize it and actually do this for, for any text. Um, so that, that's, that's the basic idea. So with that, um, as I mentioned, you know, the vision is that we'll be able to connect primary and secondary sources, primarily in support of learning and research, but I mean, in, in reality it could be used for any purpose. Um, and these connections will be accomplished by generating pairs of annotations in an automated way with this, this text matching algorithm that we have. And I kind of view this as a platform, not necessarily a site. So this new version will be a set of tools. There'll be some, there will be, there will be a website you know, that will index the content that has been matched and will provide a, a portal for, for finding that content. But it's really more of a, of a, a general purpose annotation server on the back end that would enable anybody to uh, generate you know, these kinds of links and then have those available for, uh, for linking. Uh, build us on open annotation standards, so the W3C standard for, for annotations and protocol, we will be using that for our back end and, uh, and continue to work on development of interfaces that make this you know, really intuitive and engaging. So for, uh, for, for background, I mentioned the Shakespeare project that was the original proof of concept. Uh, we've also done something similar for the U.S. Constitution. Uh, we did that as a mobile app. It's available in the iOS and Android app stores. Uh, we did a project with Hypothesis and the University of Texas and, um, and the Poultry Foundation a couple years ago where we did this in the context of a poultry annotation project with, 
with uh, annotations that allowed for you know for classroom sort of um, you know uh, collaboration and annotation on on uh, on poetry. And we've done some initial work on this new project. So we've done quite a bit of discovery work, and what we've learned you know, we kind of confirmed the original hypothesis, and that is. Performing research on primary text is hard, uh, especially with, with you know, the technology today, where it's you know, mostly keyword-oriented search to, with, with search portals that are you know, fragmented and distributed, no, no single place to really look for, for that kind of text. Um, and we also confirm that, you know, that there is a need, that, that teachers and, and researchers would, would value such a, a capability. So you know, given that, um, we took this basic idea that we explored with the Shakespeare project and thought more about what we could do with that. You know, so some of the feedback we got with, with you know, Shakespeare, almost universally, when we'd present this at a conference or, or show it to somebody, you know, the, the first question would be, you know, can you do this for, uh, for Middlemarch or can you do this for Frankenstein or you know, you know, pick your, 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 your favorite text. And not even just literature, you know, could you this, do this for the a U.S. Constitution, that was one question, or could you do this for, um, for other you know, uh, works? And so as we think about this new version of the tool, we want to be able to support historical documents, government documents, uh, anything that has a, a presence on the web that we can pull the text from and, and do this text matching with. Um, the, the other criticism uh, is that it was only JSTOR content that was linked. I mean, you know, JSTOR has a lot, but certainly not the be-all, end-all of, of scholarly research. Uh, so this, this, um, this new version will be open and will allow for other providers to add their links and, 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 uh, and do this in a, in a much broader way. And this will be part of an ecosystem. This will be one of a, a set of research tools that will allow the, this kind of discovery and, and research. The other thing was that, you know, in the original version, we didn't pay attention to mobile devices too much, so it really did not work well with small form factor devices, and, and, um, and, and so that's something we want to take care of. And, um, you know, the matching algorithm that we use did a reasonable job, but it was still pretty noisy, you know, so there's, there's more work to be done on the, on the matching and some of the, you know, the, the confidence scoring of the matches that we have, and, and we also need a way to allow users and others to go in and make corrections and, 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 and fix things that are, are, not, are not, quite, not quite right. So we've done a fair amount of uh, additional prototyping and experimentation after you know, the original project, and we've done this on a number of other works of, of various types. Um, so with that sort of as, as a background, we've decided to take another run at this, and hopefully we'll have something out in an in initial form yet this summer, and probably another version uh, later this fall that we'll have more features. But, um, but the basic idea is that you know, this will be done and allow for anything that has a presence on the web, and in particular, in this first version, an HTML representation. Down the road, we may be able to support uh, you know, PDFs and you know, EPUBs and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but initially, it's going to be uh, based on HTML. Uh, web documents. Um, so th this is the basic architecture. Um, so we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 million journal articles and books at JSTOR. In those books, there are roughly 340 million uh, quoted passages. You know, so those could be inline quotes or block quotes or anything that could be identified as, as, a, as a quotation. Yeah, so we've got a database with, with those. Um, so given a primary text in an HTML page, we can pull the text out of that HTML page, normalize it in such a way that we can then use this, this text matcher to look for matching quotes within this database that, that we've uh, generated. Uh, the results of that are then put into a backend. Uh, in this case, we use a solar index. But the, um, the content can be queried and, and delivered you know, using this, uh, this, this compliant web annotation server that, that, that we have. And um, e even though we're kind of populating this with you know, this, this back-end matcher that we have you know, for JSTOR content, uh, the idea is that any other you know, corpus could be used as a source for, the, for these links and add it to the annotation server, or even you know, maybe federate you know, these, so maybe it isn't a singular you know, service, maybe there's another um, you know, server that conforms to the same standard, then we can you know, query those in a federated way. 
And then similar to the hypothesis client, that information is then uh, added to a web page. And that can be done using an embedded script tag in the page itself, or we can use a Chrome plugin or a, a proxy server that wraps the page with you know, the necessary um, you know, logic to, to add those, those links. So that's the basic idea. So with that, uh, I'll provide a, a quick demo of the tool. This might be a bumpy ride. Uh, this is a tool that is, is in active development and much of it works. Uh, some of it doesn't work as well as it should, but, um, but I think it, it'll give the idea that I wanna show. So this is something that will be available when it's released on the JSTOR site. Uh, let me make that slightly bigger here. So the idea there'll be a, a link on the, on the main page that will take you to this, this portal that will have the texts that have been matched um, available for, for selection. In the first version, we will probably go with uh, the, the same Shakespeare plays we had in you know, the first prototype, uh, all of the books of the King James Bible, and probably a dozen or so uh, works of literature in a British literature collection. Uh, we're gonna do, or we already have Frankenstein, but we're going to probably have uh, Pride and Prejudice and a few others, and, and these texts we will be getting from, from Project Gutenberg. Um, so, now I have, this is the, uh, the Frankenstein text. It's, a, it's the same basic idea, you know, it's the, um, make that larger. It's the, the text of the document with, um, with links providing an indication of how many articles uh, quote that particular chunk of text and then a way to you know, see how, how, the, um, how the text is quoted. So we, in this case, we provide a you know, kind of a pop-up sort of thing. And then you can hover over the, the selection that shows you the quoted text and then provides both the, the suffix and the prefix showing some context as, as to how that was referenced. And then if that's something of interest, you can click through and it, it will open up the um, the article and also highlight the text in the article. So that's that's the basic idea. Now, one one difference here uh, from the, the Shakespeare is that this one will work not only on on texts that we host, but also on texts in the wild. So um, I, I showed the Shakespeare uh, prototype with a self-hosted version of of Macbeth. So this is that same text on the Folger site. In this case, I have a Chrome plugin running, and if I, um, so there's this little menu thing, so if I activate the links on this page, so these are links that are injected into the page on the Folger site. And um, again, these are, are selectable. Opens up the, um, whoops, opens up the, the article in the same sort of way. Um, we've done this with um, other texts. This is a historical document from the Yale Avalon site. Same kind of deal here. If we activate the links, they are added. And um, so that's that's kind of a that's kind of a nice uh, addition to the to the, the basic tool. Uh, but we're going to take this one step further, and that is that you know, this won't be a list of documents that we that we curate and, and, and select. That this won't be available in the first version, but hopefully by the end of the year. So the idea is that anybody could, in, in essence, do this. So, so, so the idea would be: so here's here's a poem from the poetry site. Let's say that this had not been processed previously, but you were interested in, in doing some research on, on on this poem. So the idea would be that with this, this plugin or with, with this, this proxy server that we'll have, that there will be a way to, in essence, um, submit this text for, for processing. So we would provide a form that you would fill out, you know, put some basic metadata in, and then there would be a drag and drop interface to select the text of interest within that page. Uh, once that was done, submit for processing. For something of this size, it would probably take about an hour to actually process the text and, and return the results. For a larger text, it will, will take longer. This is a batch job, and there will be some way to notify a user when they're done, when it's done. But then the idea is that uh, once it's processed, the links will show up, and then you'll be able to 
um, use the tool in the same way as if it had been you know, previously processed. So, so I think that that's that's going to open up a lot of uh, possibilities, even for for texts that are behind some sort of a, a protected um, you know, in a protected site where you don't necessarily have the text on the open web. You can submit the text from within your firewall, have a, you know, the links generated, and then the links would be added to your text, but not available to somebody else. So I think I think that's. The basic demo. A any questions? Okay, hands back up. Wow, there's a lot of hands. Um, do you have the ability to help people identify which edition of a work they are an they are annotating on? So, for example, what one of the challenges in some types of scholarship is that you'll have a quote that is present in one edition of a work, not in another edition of a work. Can your tool sort of help people, it, the text in the wild, can you say, that thing you got from Project Gut Gutenberg was probably not from Project Gutenberg mislabeled um, with the wrong edition or something like that? So if I think I understand the question, it is, um, are we able to provide these sort of matches in different versions of a text? We do, as a matter of fact. Um, I, I don't have a version that I can demo today, although, although I do have a working version that, that's sort of in, a, in an early stage. But um, you know, as an example, the Divine Comedy is a, a text that we've processed, and there are not only you know, multiple you know, versions of a, but both, multiple translations, and um, and so the, the the processing allows us to run this across multiple versions, and it aggregates those into a consolidated set of, of matches. And then, so in, in the case of, of, of the Divine Comedy, we've done it for an Italian version and, and two different English translations. And in the English translations, surprisingly, differ quite a bit. I mean, it's not like you know it's one or two words that are different. In some cases, the entire a phrase is different, and we're able to pretty well reconcile those in, into a consolidated uh, set. And, and the fuzzy matching algorithm that we use is also pretty lenient in terms of how close a match has has to be to be flagged. You know, given that much of the source material in JSTOR is OCR content, and, and all that that implies, uh, you know, this, this has to necessarily be you know, pretty you know lenient in terms of the matching that it does. But it it does work pretty well across different translations and. Uh, in versions of a text. And we also allow, uh, we will allow a user to select the, the, the primary text that they're interested in. So in the, in the case I showed you with the, um, uh, the Shakespeare plays, we have two versions. We have the version that we host, and we have the version on the, on the, or they have the version on the Folger site. What I'm imagining is that when a person clicks through, we'll provide something that's you know, conceptually like a URL link resolver, where it gives you a list of the, you know, the available ones that you can select, and then you can click through to the one that you're most interested in. Hmm. Question here? Yeah, Ron, oh, very loud. Uh, I have a question um, related to the user interface. Once I've selected the, the 16 references, so for example, here on chapter one. Right. Suppose, yeah. Um, can you take me through what's possible there with the toggle sort in the bottom left? What kind of sorting options the user then has? Yeah, so that, yeah, as I mentioned, this is a very early version of this interface. And, and so I'm imagining that there will be a toolbar, whether it's at the bottom or at the top, there, there'll be a toolbar with a number of, of filters and, and you know, widgets for allowing you to do different types of sorts. Right now, the, the sort, I, th I think it toggles between uh, decreasing by year of publication or publication date and by you know, some notion of confidence in, in the match itself. So all these matches you know, have a certain confidence factor that's been calculated you know, based on the size of the match and how similar the, you know, the, the text is and whether or not it can find some signals in the, um, in, in the prefix. So in the, in the Shakespeare version I showed earlier, uh, the matching confidence is only based on the, the size of the match text and, and the edit distance or, or the, uh, you know, the, the similarity of the text. And we'd often get some false positives because we'd find you know, commonly, you know, you know, common phrases that, that, that match, but they're not part of the, the text in question. So now we look at the, at the prefix and the suffix and look for 
primarily named entities. You know, so if we see a reference to, in this case, you know, if, if um, Mary Shelley was referenced or if Frankenstein was part of the prefix, that'd be a signal that would give us more confidence that sure. this was a, a match of Frankenstein, not some other you know, spirit. Well, this is a, a long match. So, I mean, this, this is, you know, the probability of this being, you know, a false positive is very low, but you get shorter uh, quotes that you know, give you lots of false positives. The other half of the question, I guess, is from this screen, I'm envisioning using this as a researcher. Do you anticipate making some bulk actions available where, let's say I wanted to, to, to quickly download and reference all 16 of these articles? Is that something that you would allow us to do or uh, build Perhaps, I mean, um, you know, th th this will be a, you know, a, th this is a project that we'll be incubating, so we'll have a first version that we'll have probably some minimal features and then we'll be adding more okay. as we get feedback from users and, and, and such. But the other thing is that, the, the database for this will be an open database. You know, the annotation server will be available to anybody to link to. You, know, you could develop your own interface. I mean, you know, we're going to open source the, the client code as well, so you can take that as a starting point and then you know, tweak it to your heart's content if, if that, that's uh, your desire. Aye, aye. Okay. I'm very sorry for my English. I'm coming from Italy, Roma. Um, so, um, may, if possible, show me the ar architecture of your um, job. Uh, uh, yeah. The okay. Um. Yeah, okay. Um, the question is this, uh, how you use text normalizer. So the, the, the you text... You, you know that Amazon use the same process, can PC. I am a memetics researcher. Memetics, like meme in English. Uh, I think there is a little question on the normalizer, because all meme, all meme remain in the book. The question is, to show the notes and uh, um, uh, link notes outside on longitude. This is my this is my question. Uh, I think there is a mistake on normalizer the text because uh, uh, you have to show um, my my opinion uh, counter of nature to 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 measure the process. Yeah, I'm not sure I completely understand the question, but very bad English. But the, the, the text normalization is to identify the, the, the text of interest in the, in the larger document and then you know, preserve uh, enough information about where that text was found you know, at, a, at a pretty granular level to allow you know, linking of the matches back into the text you know, when we kind of do the, this round tripping you know, business. So, it, it's based on you know doing some parsing of the HTML, and then looking at the you know the we use the XPath of the you know, the particular DOM elements as a way to kind of associate the the text with the location in the document, and that is you know stored in the annotation database. I'm not sure if I if I am answering your question or not, but um, but that's in essence what the 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 the, uh, the normalization process is doing is just trying to put the the text into a form that then can be used by the by the matcher to look for you know, relevant passages in in this uh, quotation, quotation database. Any question here? But, uh, we we yeah. could talk, if, if you'd like to find me later, we could talk offline and I can maybe go into this in more, in more detail. Uh, so sort of building on other questions, um, what about paraphrase text? In a lot of scholarly work, they'll make reference to a passage or a section, but they won't quote the entire thing. Um, so is there a way of sort of dealing with fuzzy matches with that? Could you say that again? So when you're quoting a primary text, often it gets paraphrased instead of directly quoted. So if someone's talking about chapter one in Frankenstein or a particular scene, they might not quote the whole intro paragraph there, but it's talking about that paragraph. Um, so how would this be able to find the JSTOR articles or other articles that are using that same source text, though it is not a direct quote? So in this particular version, it's all based on this, this uh, you know, fuzzy text matching. 
but I think the, the approach is generalizable enough and then there are you know, kind of pluggable components that could be put in there to use other ways to, to do that, that text matching. As a matter of fact, I, I had a, f um, I don't know if I have a, I guess what, here's, here's a, um, a page and a link, if you want to go to that link, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's live. Th this is a, um, a tool that a, a researcher did on the Enid where he used the, the, the quote matching that, that we do with our, with our uh, we call it the matchmaker you know, back end, but it's doing that, this fuzzy text matching. And he combined it with um, some work that he did where he took the full text for the, the, the same articles and looked for the canonical references um, and, and found you know, a number of, of matches. And it was interesting to see both the overlap in terms of how those matches were, were discovered and, and how, we, how many were found versus the, the, the quote matching, the text matching. A lot of overlap, but there's also a lot uh, where one found a, a match or a, a reference and another didn't. I mean, so I, th I think they're very complementary in many respects. And there could be any number of techniques for doing the same sort of matching. So the, the idea is that this would be a, a pretty extensible uh, architecture that will allow for other, other techniques to be applied. Do we have other questions for Ron? Yeah, it's about the way, when you talked about normalizing, it sounded like you're creating the coordinate systems for your text based on the HTML representation. Have you considered creating one that's independent of the HTML representation, such as, so just count like indexing characters, for example? Not yet, but, but that's as part of the, you know, the, the larger vision is that, you know, that the representation of that primary text could take any number of forms. HTML was a good place to start. You know, the, you know, many, many documents on the web um, that, that we can, you know, can pull text from and, and use. But, um, but this normalization process puts it into kind of a neutral form. So it, it doesn't really know that it came from an HTML document. It basically is, is um, chunks of text that have uh, an identifier that allow us to relate that text back to the source, but whether it's an HTML document or an EPUB or a you know, PDF or, or, or what have you, that it doesn't really care or, or matter. Other questions for Ron or shall we give it up? Oh, wait, there's many more questions. Okay, you've sparked off quite a conversation here. Sorry, thank you very much, very exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing this released. I guess one of my questions sort of builds on the, the one two before me, which is just to, to ask what qualifies as a quote when you're extracting from the JSTOR literature to create this database of, of quotations. Um, I'm curious in, in sort of what exactly that entails in, in, yeah, I guess no, in that, the future, whether it might go beyond quotation directly. So, yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, right now, we, we take kind of a simplistic view of what a, a quoted passage might be. We look for, for text in our documents that, that have quotation marks or, you know, a, an offset in the, in the type uh, where it, it, you know, we signify a block quote. We did something quite interesting with the, uh, the Constitution, though, in that uh, there are a number of named clauses in the U.S. Constitution. You know, so you've got the Commerce Clause and, you know, the, um, you know, the Takings Clause. I mean, if, if you remember back to... Um, uh, you know, social studies, you know, there's, I don't know, there's, you know, a hundred different named clauses in the Constitution. So oftentimes in, in, uh, in journals, they will refer to the Commerce Clause. They won't refer to the text, you know, that, that is actually in the Constitution. They refer to it with the shorthand. And so we uh, developed a, you know, kind of a mapping of, of that text to the named clauses and then look for both, you know, the actual text itself, you know, the literal text and also the, the named clause and then match those. And so that's just maybe a kind of a, a simple example, but um, we're not limited to only doing text matching. I think there are other techniques, but it would require, of course, some you know, special logic you know, to kind of handle you know, the particular document and, and the you know, conventions or techniques that are used. Question here. Question here. Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, what kind of database did you use? And like, uh, I guess since you had to use fuzzy text matching, was there any did that like make you choose a particular kind of data organization? So the um, this quote data database that we're using this is a um, a Dynamo database in in Amazon. So you know it's, it's kind of tuned for you know large data you know of you know, relatively small size. Um, I mean other data stores could be used, but we found that to work particularly well. 
uh, for the actual annotations themselves are using a solar index. So solar is a Lucene-based search engine with a web interface. The reason I selected that is that it was pretty easy to extend you know, the basic W3C protocol to include support for some faceting, filtering, and sorting. That's yeah, not something that is inherently provided in the protocol, so this is sort of an extension, but solar is particularly well suited for, for doing that sort of thing you know, very quickly and, and uh, you know, pretty easily uh, you know, for the most part. Okay, thank you. More questions for Ron? Uh, Heather Bodong has. Um, very exciting project. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I'm an educational researcher. I wish, if possible, you can share a bit about how this work is used or you envision it being used in classroom and how that's integrated with the typical workflow in the classroom. Um, is that clear? Uh, is, is the question about how this would be used in a, in a classroom? Uh, exactly, yeah. how this could be, or yeah. if so, already been used, how it's being used right now. And that, that's, that's, that's primarily our, our, our target, is, is the use in the classroom, and, and, and maybe even more specifically in secondary schools. I mean, I, I see this, as, this tool as providing a very you know, gentle introduction to, you know, to early students you know, in terms of you know, how um, you know, secondary you know, literary criticism is, is, is done in journals and in linking that to the primary text, so it provides kind of a nice introduction in that way. In the project that I mentioned um, that we did with um, Hypothesis a couple years ago, we explored this idea of both using this, this matching that we do with, with the matchmaker, but also you know, layering a, um, an annotation tool on top of that that would be used within the classroom environment. There's much more work to be done there, and, and you know, our first goal here is just us to do the, the primary to secondary uh, text matching. You're putting you know, additional tools on top of that and, and, and putting you know, uh, resources that would be used by educators you know, into the mix. Is probably a second phase, or maybe it's something that we don't even try to do ourselves per se. That we provide hooks to allow others to do that, or, or some combination, you know, thereof. Um, so it's still pretty early days. Well, thank you so much. Uh, if there's no other questions, we should probably move on with our agenda because we have more stuff coming up. So a big uh, round of applause for Ron. Thank you.